students, I am your 20 minute teacher. I will be teaching you mathematics for 20 minutes. Are you ready? The next mathematics lesson that I will explain to you for 20 minutes is Describing mathematical system and its axiomatic structure in general and in geometry in particular. In this video presentation, this would be the start of geometry lesson. We will discuss about geometry, its structure and some definitions. First is Axiom Axiom is defined as a statement. Accept it as true. As the basis for argument or inference. Second is Postulate Postulate is defined as a proposition that is accepted as true in order to provide a basis for logical reasoning as you can observe in the definition axiom and postulate are both statement or proposition that is accepted to be true for the basis of argument or logical reasoning because of these axiom and postulate we can create an axiomatic system. Axiomatic system is any set of axiom or postulate from which some or all axiom or postulate can be used in conjunction to logically derive theorems. Through the help of these axiom, we can create, formulate, or derive a theorem. Next would be theorem. Theorem is defined as a general proposition not self-evident but proved by a chain of reasoning. A truth established by means of accepted truths. Under the theorem there are theorems that are created from the theorem itself and these are called either corollary or lemma. Corollary is defined as a proposition that follows from one already proved or the theorem itself while lemma it is a subsidiary or intermediate theorem in an argument or proof in other words these corollary and lemma are statements or propositions that derived or formulated in a theorem now let us go deeper in each term of the mathematical structure. As we all know that an axiom or postulate is statement that is taken to be true to serve as a premise or starting point for further reasoning and argument. It is any mathematical statement that serve as a beginning from which other statements are logically derived. Here are the examples of postulate that we will be using along with our discussion. First is a line contains at least two points. Second is a plane contains at least three non-collinear points. Third is through any two points there is exactly one plane. Fourth is through any three non-collinear points there is exactly one plane. Fifth is, if two planes intersect, then their intersection is a line. And last, for the triangles, we have side, angle, side congruence postulate, or the SAS, the side, side, side congruence postulate or the SSS and the angle side angle congruence postulate or the ASA now let us have theorem theorem by definition it is a statement proven based on axioms postulates other theorems and some set of logical connectives which means that theorems 
are statements that are proved using different action postulates definitions and other theorems with the logical connectives here are the examples of theorems first is if two lines intersect then they intersect in exactly one point second is if a point lies outside a line then exactly one plane contains both the line and the point and last example if two lines intersect then exactly one plane contains both lines next would be corollary it is a theorem that is usually considered an easy consequence or results of another theorem I will give you an example of a corollary since corollary is a result of a theorem we will be using this theorem two angles that together form a straight line are supplementary when they add up the result is 180 degrees where if you add two angles and whose sum is 180 degrees therefore these two angles are supplementary angles because of this theorem there is another theorem resulted the resulted theorem is the vertical angle theorem when two lines intersect the angles opposite each other are equal now let us have lemma it is generally used to describe an auxiliary fact that is used in the proof of a more significant result which is a theorem since lemma is a theorem which supports a theorem I will give you an example for an instance our main theorem is angle at the center theorem the illustration of this theorem has been shown now its auxiliary fact which is resulted a theorem is called the lemma is the angle in the semicircle theorem this theorem is just a result of the main theorem which is angle at the center theorem now this is the axiomatic structure where all are rooted from the axioms and postulates before this axiomatic system is created there are building blocks that we need to know these are also known as the building blocks of geometry they are the undefined terms which consist of point line and plane these three undefined terms in geometry which are point line and plane let us review on these undefined terms first is point a point has no dimension no width no length and no thickness it is represented by a dot which is used to pinpoint a location it is named by a capital letter in coordinate plane a point is named by an ordered pair x y these are examples of representation of a point next would be the line a line has no width and no thickness but it has length since it extends indefinitely in opposite directions it is named by a single italicized small letter or by any two points on the line these are examples that represents line the last undefined term is the plane a plane has no thickness but it has length and width it is represented by any flat surface and named by any three points of the plane which are not on the same line or simply by a single script letter here are some examples of plane let us go back to the structure 
because of these undefined terms, which are point, line, and a plane. We can create the defined terms. Here are examples of defined terms. First is endpoints. Second is line segment. Third is ray. Last is angles. Because of the undefined terms, these defined terms were formed. Let us define these defined terms and let us understand it more. First is endpoint. Endpoint refers to the end of segment or ray. Example. We have line segment XY. The endpoints here are points X and Y. Another example. We have line segment AH. The endpoints here are points A and H. Next would be the line segment. A line segment is a subset or part of a line. It consists of two endpoints. Example. We have this line XY. Since line segment is a part of a line, we have line segment XY. We have line AH for another example. So we can say that line segment AH as an example of line segment. Another defined term is array. Array is a subset of a line which has one endpoint and all points from the endpoint on one side. Example we have this line AB. Since ray is a subset or part of a line, so we have ray AB. Another example we have line DR. Since ray is a part of a line, we have ray DR. Next example of defined term is an angle. An angle is a figure formed by two rays with common endpoint and which are not on the same line. Example we have ray AB and ray AD where they share the common point A. So we can form an angle. We have angle B, A, D, or angle A. Another example. We have this ray. And this ray. Since these rays shared common end point. Now it formed an angle. We can label it as angle 1. Another example. We have this ray. And this ray. Since these rays shared common endpoint, now it formed an angle. We can label it as angle U. As you can observe that angles are named differently. We can name it using three letters, a number, and its vertex. Vertex refers to the common endpoint of two rays. Now, I will give an additional term that can be used in geometry. First is vertical angles. The angles opposite each other when two lines cross. They are always equal. In this example angle A and angle C are vertical angles. And also angle B and angle D are also vertical angles. They are also called vertically opposite angles. So we can conclude that angle B is congruent to angle D and angle C is also congruent to angle A. Another one is complementary angles. Two angles are complementary. When they add up to 90 degrees, we have this example. Angle C, U, T. And angle T, U, E are complementary. These angles don't have to be together. These two are complementary. Because 27 degrees plus 63 degrees is equal to 90 degrees. 
Next term would be the midpoint. The midpoint of a line segment marks the point at which the segment is divided into two equal segments. In other words, the length of the segment from either end point to the midpoint are equal. Example we have this segment. Line segment XY. And we have point B here. Given that point B is a midpoint. So we can say that line segment XB is congruent to line segment BY. That's it. We are done in describing mathematical system and its axiomatic structure in general and in geometry in particular. I will leave in exercises for you to practice what we've learned. See you in my next video.